It's a tarnished victory for Peru's strongman Alberto Fujimori. He may have won the election, but he's lost the respect of his people. And those who oppose him are paying the price in blood and tears. I think there's going to be a lot of repression. When you show this, I hope I'm still alive. In an unstable continent, Peru has become a wild card. The democracy that isn't. It was Peru's moment of greatness. The mighty sun-worshipping empire of the Incas. The man who built that empire, the Inca Pachacutec, is the ultimate local hero whose name means literally the one who changed everything, who turned the world upside down. And now, more than 500 years on, some say and some are being encouraged to believe that the spirit of Pachacutec has returned to Peru that this man too will change everything. This man, native to the Andes, will restore opportunity and self-respect and honest government. This man is Alejandro Toledo. Alejandro Toledo was not Peru's only opposition candidate, but after a bruising election campaign, he was the last man standing against the forces of Fujimori. High in the Andes, in Cusco, the capital of the old Inca Empire, he is the focus for all their hopes. Queremos devolverle la dignidad al pueblo peruano. Queremos nosotros también contribuir a que esa dignidad sea recuperada. Mi objetivo es apoyar la democracia, porque sin la democracia no hay trabajo, no hay libertad de expresión. Toledo is known as El Cholo, the mixed blood, the shoeshine boy from the slums who rose to become a Harvard professor. The first president, he tells his supporters, who will look like they do. Destiny has placed me in this role of leading the democratic forces in the civil society with the purpose of returning democracy, freedom to my country. This is a responsibility to which I will not betray, no matter what. When we last visited Peru two years ago, President Fujimori was eager to use the occasion to promote his good works for the people of Peru. In the midst of adversity with El Nino wreaking havoc, the president saw himself as a saviour, a hands-on president who could and would lead his people through tribulation to the promised land. We have a complete peaceful country with a good pr prospect uh, a lot of investment, stability. After all, he had successfully waged war against the notorious and brutal guerrillas of the Shining Path. Their leader, Abimael Guzman, he captured and displayed in a cage before imprisoning him. And with the help of the shadowy but all-powerful head of secret police, Vladimiro Montesinos, he brought a successful end to the long-running siege of the Japanese embassy. Now we have restored the authority and the order. To achieve his ends, Alberto Fujimori in 1992 had staged a military coup, the self-coup. This corruption of democratic freedoms was necessary, he said, to ensure the stability of the country. Independent congressmen like Javier Diaz Conseco were to feel the subtle brunt of Peru's new style of government. 
In 1990, my house was dynamited with my children and my wife inside. Then I lost my car. They shot my car. After that, my kids, they tried to uh, kidnap them. This is a mafia government, if you want to deal with this in one name, a mafia government. Fujimori claimed the end justified his brutal means and then, for the good of the country, changed the constitution to allow himself to stand again for the presidency. The election he staged this April looked like the real thing. Like any good ceremony, whether religious or political, it worked as theatre, providing a lively show for the people. But international monitors quickly denounced the vote as a fraud, verging on a farce. The fact is that we had one million and a half more votes than voters. Rafael Roncaliolo from the monitoring group Transparencia. The Toledo was at the last of the ballot. And then in some places, the, this bottom of the ballot was cut off. Another method I hear is that they put wax next to the name so you couldn't write. Yes, right. It is that right? Yeah, yeah it's, true, it's true, it's true. Members of the government deny fraud. They concede the election had some irregularities, but the world's not perfect. No, I don't accept that there has been any fraud. I think that as in any process uh, all around the world, there should be problems. There have been problems. So the stories about the ballot papers being put waxed or the ballot papers being no, cut this off? Has, this, this is not true. That's not true. That's all. It, it, it's, it was said also in 1995. And if you look on the newspapers all the time that we have elections, we should find that it's almost a part of our political culture to talk about fraud. But maybe it's part of your political culture that there is fraud. No, no, there is not. With all the weapons of state at his fingertips, including the army, Mr Fujimori has always managed to suppress dissent. But this time, in Alejandro Toledo, he has a genuine opponent who is not prepared to lie down or be intimidated. They have, of course, threatened 126 times in my life. They threatened my wife. They threatened my daughter. Do you see, it's hard for someone who doesn't see the guns, they don't see the tanks in the street, to believe it is a dictatorship. It is not very fashionable now to have a clean-cut dictatorship with uh, two or three generals. Uh, Pinochet in today's world will not be very fashionable, will not be very believable. You have here a new style in which they captured through blackmail, through intelligence service, a Gestapo. Capture the institutions and they use it to their own service to get the purpose of re, re, re elected. Having lost the election, Alejandro Toledo is now fighting back with the only weapon he has public opinion. El Paseo de la República. Invito a todos los peruanos. Aquellos que han llegado a Lima, aquellos que están en Lima, de los diferentes conos de Lima, los invito personalmente. Hoy día... He is staging a series of three marches, calling on supporters from the four corners of Peru, what the Incas used to call the Cuatro Suyos, to descend upon Lima in massive numbers. The demonstrations will culminate on Peru's Day of Independence, the day of Fujimori's inauguration but it will not be easy. We have in this bus, in this bus in which we are now talking, we have people from the intelligence service in this bus right now. It's a high-risk strategy, and Fujimori's forces are already mobilizing to block the marches. They are using the book 
on traffic regulations that had never been used in this country before. They are trying to enforce uh, the law to the limit so to uh, stop some of the marchers and their goal to reach uh, the capital in Lima and to be part of the rest of, uh, of the demonstrations there. Yet still they come, by bus and boat, on foot, from the jungles and valleys and high mountain villages. They stream into the capital, night and day. The police, too, have taken up positions. It will fall, it will fall, they sing. The dictatorship will fall. We are right now uh, equipping ourselves with surplus, military surplus, gas masks. Though Toledo okay, insists it will be a peaceful uh, march, German his people are preparing masks. for the worst. This is a CS tear gas grenade. So what they do is they throw a barrage at you that will saturate an area in such a way that you cannot breathe. It's uh, difficult to be part of the opposition here and to have a democratic position in uh, the midst of an, not only an authoritarian government but an authoritarian culture. You have here a culture of, of fear and it's very difficult to overcome fear. Throughout the campaign, intelligence service members have called my child, telling her, be careful, we're going to kill your dad. Tell him not to go to such and such a plane. Tell him not to go into the plane because we will kill him. You know, Toledo's wife, Eliane a Belgian-born banker committed to her husband's cause. My husband is convinced that it's worth it to die for such a cause. I cannot say so because obviously I do not want to lose my family. It's the only thing I have. But I think it's too late to say whether it's worth it or not. In a desperately poor country like Peru, Fujimori's hands-on approach has been the key to his success. No matter that he didn't pay for this food and clothing, nor organize for its distribution, Fujimori has refined taking credit to an art form. <laughs> Peru's extensive network of community kitchens, for example, providing meals and milk to an astonishing 60% of Peruvians. They would starve without them. This tiny kitchen is one of 58 in Cusco. They are supposedly independent, the officials locally elected, most of the food coming from foreign donations. But Fujimori has been steadily undermining the integrity of this food network, creating a strong sense of dependence on and obligation to his government. What is very sad is that Fujimori makes it look as though he provides for that because he uses the food donation and the humanitarian help which comes from abroad for himself. And he gives it the name. He says, I give it to you myself personally. Therefore, I buy your conscience and your vote. If the presidency was won by fraud, the Congress was secured by more blatant means. Fujimori's party was actually in the minority after the election, which many saw as a healthy state of affairs, that Congress could provide some sort of break on the president's power. But the president had other ideas. One by one, amidst extraordinary scenes, independent and opposition congressmen unexpectedly crossed the floor to line up with the government. Those holding out threw coins and called turncoat as more than a dozen members switched sides. Enough to give Fujimori the majority which the voters had denied him. And those are people that have sold 
themselves and obviously have cheated the electors because they ran with a proposition of being an opposition member of Congress, a democratic member of Congress. And now they have sold their conscience and their political uh, thought to Fujimori. What's the going rate to win the vote of a congressman? They said that it was $10,000 a month plus a uh, one-time fee, no, that they paid uh, when this congressman approached them. Toledo is courting international support. The likes of Raul Alfonsin, former president of Argentina, and other Latin American leaders from countries which reported gross irregularities during the elections, but later declined to intervene. The United States cut aid to Peru in protest, but now says it will work with Fujimori for the time being. Fujimori, in turn, pledged to reform the electoral process, but he's made such promises before. Do you believe he has such intentions? Nada. Not a bit. Not one inch. He has no credibility whatsoever on the eyes of Peruvians, and the international community has told them, him straight on, yes, we know about your promises. But America, it's sold you down the river, hasn't it? That's the opinion of the United States. You will hear tomorrow the opinion of Peruvians. <laughs> And indeed, the next day, the voices of Peruvians were to be heard loud and clear. From Los Cuatro Suyos, the four corners of Peru, they gather to support democracy and to oppose Fujimori. At the last minute, President Fujimori passes a law banning press helicopters from flying over the city. Toledo's people claim it is to prevent the public seeing the strength of the demonstration. Fujimori's people claim the demonstration is pitifully small. He has got no more than 50,000 people, and I am uh, very generous to give him 50,000 people in that uh, meeting. Were you there? No, no, I saw it by television. Would you yeah. believe me if I said it looked more than 50,000 people? Perhaps, but, but I, uh, I haven't heard about people saying more than 50,000. Do you believe that Peru is ready for true democracy? No, I think we are building our democracy. And if you ask me if there is any democracy in the world, I should say there is no democracy in the world. Rightly or wrongly, do you accept that some Peruvians are afraid? Yes, as in any country. In any country, many, I think all people in all countries is afraid of their secret services. I think secret services are not what they say, a bride that is white and... So you and think so, it's OK to be afraid? Uh, I think that, uh, as in religion, the first stage of love is, is to be afraid of, to have fear of. But it is not enough. From the fear of, uh, of being afraid, you have to grow to love. Some things in Peru are difficult to love. Amidst massive security, the president prepares for his third inauguration. Fujimori is internationally isolated. Few foreigners attend. Even within his own capital, Fujimori must barricade himself from his people. police, the army, the church remain loyal. But as the ceremonies begin, it is not tears of joy in the eyes of the beholders. The tear gas is just two blocks away. With an iron fists, 
strangling opposition, Fujimori takes power for another five years. The remnants of the protest are no match for the military. The most frustrated of the protesters basically turn upon themselves. Fires are lit in public buildings. No one knows by whom. In one fire, the disputed election returns are incinerated. And by the end of the night, there will be six dead. The government blames Toledo's people. Toledo's people blame the government. Truth is obscured on all sides. The only thing clear is the passion that remains. How far are you prepared to push it? Are you prepared to push to restore democracy or to get rid of this particular president? To the end. The dictatorships for which South America became rightly famous may have changed, but the conditions which bore them have not, nor has the struggle against them.